Stadia has been the gaming industry's go-to punchline from its announcement. Ever since Google first unveiled their plans to enter the console market, people were cautious, and rightfully so. Google owns everything. Your entertainment, your entire web history, your phone. At this point, they probably own your mum. But my video games? Come on, man. I'd rather gouge my eyes out than give my cash to an evil, money-hungry corporation. But I think most people were cautiously optimistic. Google had already made a bunch of physical devices, and they made the dinosaur game for crying out loud, so really now, how bad could it be? I suppose I should start out with a confession. I'm actually not a big gamer, uh, though I do play FIFA 19 quite a bit, and really enjoy how immersive it is. Ferry. Turns out, instead of unveiling a new console, Google unveiled a cloud gaming service, which is an idea that absolutely no one has done before. To be fair, Google does have the infrastructure, the money, and the talent to make this concept as polished and streamlined as possible, which is the one area that services like GeForce Now fall short in. The problem is... They didn't? This reveal was terrible. It didn't announce anything, show much of any gameplay, and featured MatPat, everyone's favorite YouTuber. They mentioned the odd cool idea, like how you could launch a game from within a YouTube trailer, but then they showed the controller, and I immediately lost all faith in this product. I can just picture the business meeting where a bunch of 40-year-old white guys had a deep discussion about how to appeal to a gaming audience, and the one guy who played Contra 30 years ago raised his hand and went, I know! This doesn't make me think of gaming. This makes me think of what my mum thinks gaming is. Everything about Stadia screamed of incompetency, like they looked at what other companies were doing and tried to copy them, but without any of the charm or care that they put into their products. It just felt hollow, like a corporate product, and in many ways reminded me of the Ouya, everyone's favourite console. There was no way that this was going to be good. And yeah, it wasn't. Google Stadia launched, kind of, in November of last year. There were a whole 22 games available, only one of which was an exclusive, and it had an asking price of £120. And it wasn't even finished. Only Pixel phones were supported at launch, great for the five people who owned one of them. To play on a TV, you had to have a Chromecast Ultra, and most of the options were locked behind a mobile app, because of course they were. All those cool features they announced, like being able to play on every device you own, directly live streaming from Stadia to YouTube, and being able to open games through trailers, were nowhere to be found. Presumably the cost of having MatPat at their GDC talk meant that some features had to be cut. Remember that launch lineup? You know, free Tomb Raider games and Just Dance 2020. That was originally half the size and was only added to once everyone had a fit, and justifiably so. And that was just the start of the problems. Chromecast Ultras were overheating, reviewers with great connection speeds got constant lag spikes, and most people didn't even get their access code on launch day after paying £120 for day one access. It was a huge mess, and led to Stadia becoming the gaming equivalent of the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme. But now, nearly six months later, Google has finally heeded our wishes and made Stadia available to everyone, which is nice, I guess? It was clearly done as a way to make money off of a global pandemic, but at least I can now play Grid for free. Said no one ever, but hey, I'm bored, you're bored, so let's give this Stadia thing a whirl. Actually, that's a lie. I'm not bored at all. I'm loving quarantine. It's like my dream to never leave the house, and I've got so much done. Like, I watched Aliens, and I watched Men in Black, and I watched Groundhog Day, and I watched Kiki's Delivery Service, which is a classic. Uh, I also watched Chernobyl, which is fucking fantastic it's so good and uh, i've also been brushing my teeth a bunch they're looking, they're looking shinier than ever it sucks Actually, it's not terrible. I'd say it's about as good as the Switch UI, but the Switch UI has about as much charm as a bowl of cornflakes, so it's not exactly a victory. There's a library menu, a store menu, 
which has a whole section dedicated to DLC. I'm getting war flashbacks. But everything is too big and claustrophobic? Is that the right word? Oh, thanks for that one, Google. When my library is only 13 games and I still have to scroll to see them all, I think that's a design flaw. But it doesn't quite compare to the options menu, which is literally unfinished. Half of the options are locked to the mobile app, so if you want to change the graphics settings, you have to find your phone, download the Stadia app, because why would you already have the Stadia app downloaded, boot up the Stadia app, sign in to the Stadia app, navigate to the options menu in the Stadia app, fucking work. change the setting you want in the Stadia app, instead of just change the fucking setting on your PC. It's six months after launch and basic stuff like this is still an issue, somehow. Elsewhere, you can bring up a handy dandy overlay in game that is neither handy nor dandy. While Steam has a bunch of options and PS4 and Xbox give you quick access to settings, voice chat and other stuff that you'd actually use, Stadia gives you barely any options and the ones that it does give you are about as useful as a bowl of cornflakes. Check my connection quality. Wh why? I don't need a menu to check that Stadia, the frame rate tells me all I need to know. You can also mess about with controllers, and by mess about with, I mean look at. Voice chat is here, as well as a friends list. But the day I see anyone find any use out of Stadia's built-in voice chat will be the day I reach 1 million subscribers. And there are achievements, which means that this service is already better than the Epic Games Store. Sorry, Epic Gamer. And that's it for the UI. No profile pages, detailed options, or an exit button while in game. You have to hold escape to quit, which is baffling. But at least it's clean and easy to navigate, which is more than can be said for Xbox. Hello there, and welcome to hell. Can I recommend you a Stadia Pro subscription? It sucks. Stadia's own subscription service, also known as a tax for people with 4K TVs. £9 a month for the ability to play games at 4K 60fps, and I thought my Patreon was a waste of money. It's not, please, I'm begging you. You also get access to a bunch of games for free every month, kinda like PS Plus and Xbox Live Gold, but way worse. On PS Plus, you get Uncharted 4 and Dirt Rally 2. On Stadia, you get Zombie Army 4 Dead War, the Turing Test, and Steamworld Heist, the latter of which is excellent and you should all play, but that's besides the point. At least you don't have to pay to play online, which is the one thing that has bogged down consoles for years, but being slightly better than one awful thing isn't exactly a selling point. Speaking of terrible selling points, PUBG! Hello there, and welcome to hell. Can I recommend you a PUBG? While I was writing this script for the third time, Stadia announced that PUBG was joining the service as a Stadia Pro freebie, and because by this point I decided that I was going to play every Stadia Pro game for this review, I indirectly forced myself to play it. And yeah, it went about as well as expected. Oh hey guys. Hey bro. Mind if I just no, let me just let me just let me equip the shotgun. No, let me equip no look mate mate let me equip the shotgun. No the shot no the That's a report. In other news, I can now amend my Fortnite video with another positive. At least it isn't PUBG. Shit. Enemy down. It sucks. Some of the time. Stadia's main issue comes from its basic concept and how unreliable of an idea it is. Streaming games over the internet comes with a bunch of problems, from latency to visual downgrades, availability to lag, and most crucially, 
it locks out a bunch of people. While most people in cities have great internet speeds and people in South Korea live in 2040, anywhere else is a mixed bag. I live in a great place called the middle of nowhere, and for the past few years I've had to deal with speeds that look like this, this, and even this. Thankfully, a few months ago I got fiber, and I have been living the dream. Being able to download Regret has never been easier. I've got a wired connection, consistent speeds, and a very attractive face, but that's besides the point. But even with this setup, Ethernet and looks better than famed Hollywood star Chris Pratt, Stadia is still super inconsistent. Sometimes it works great, other times it works like crap, but 90% of the time it works decently enough. It was often a case-by-case -case basis, simple games like the Steamboat games and Spitlings look great, while complex stuff like PUBG and Destiny 2 look like ass, that is if you're willing to call PUBG complex. Guilt, the one Stadia exclusive, is 90% grain half of the time, and so is Serious Sam HD, a game that came out in 2009 and looks like this. Grid looks great, surprisingly, even with all those fancy weather effects, although that doesn't stop me from being horrendous at it. Stacks on stacks on stacks looks horrible, but for once that isn't a fault of Stadia. And Thumper just looks fine, but is ruined by the slight latency that makes it impossible to play. But what about an issue that affects every game? A problem that shouldn't even be an issue, but somehow is. Something so terrible that I'm dedicating an entire paragraph to just how bad it is. The horrible fucking frame rate. Some quick context, I don't really care about frame rate as long as it's either A, locked, or B, higher than 60. It can be 30, 60, 5 billion, don't really care, I've played Wild World, I can handle anything. Another reminder, I also have a pretty great connection, about 70 megabits per second on a good day, double the requirement for 4K 60fps on Stadia. So why then do games run at around 55 frames per second at 1080p? That was one of the selling points, the big thing that sets it apart from consoles is the ability to play games in both 4K and at 60fps. And they couldn't even manage that. And this is every game, bear in mind, not just the intensive stuff. Every game runs at a super inconsistent frame rate, and it looks like ass. You do get used to it after a while, but at that point, I'd rather have it locked at 30 than have to deal with a constant stutter. Changing the settings in the Stadia mobile app doesn't have any effect, so I assume it's a delivery problem? Maybe Chrome can't handle 60fps properly? Uh, I don't know. Whatever the cause, it ruins the rest of the service, because games are still pretty playable. But sometimes, on the odd day, the Google Gods just decide to serve you up a cold hard plate of FUCK YOU BITCH! And suddenly, your game that's running okay I guess is now running really not okay I guess. And seeing it unfold in real time is both infuriating and extremely entertaining. Stadia is funny. There's no way of getting about it. It's a big old family guy funny moment. All you need to do is type it out in a Discord chat and you'll immediately be the funniest guy on the server, praised by the gods. But it's not funny because of the service itself, nah, that thing's boring. It's funny because of everything that it inspires. The announcements, the fans who defend it, the dumbass controller that I want to destroy with a hammer. Seeing Phil Harrison's bald head that looks like an egg is the highlight of my week, but Stadia itself is just a mediocre gaming platform. It's not ooh your levels of terrible, but it isn't anywhere close to hanging out with the big boys, and yet it still thinks it is. It has an air of smugness to it, like, yeah, we're Stadia, we're one of the cool kids, we've got all the cool technology and the power and the games, without delivering on any one of those promises at all. But the thing is, Stadia could have been great, but it came far too early to reach its potential. 
I do believe cloud gaming will be the future of this industry, especially with consoles becoming more and more expensive and devices like the Switch proving that having options is important to people. But the infrastructure just isn't there yet. Until 5G towers are on every street corner and everyone has fiber, these services are little more than a novelty. The concept is fascinating and exciting. Imagine the freedom of being able to play every game on one dedicated service that is on every screen you own, where you can play a level on a bus and then on your laptop and then at home on your big TV with no drawbacks or issues. It's an incredible idea. But it's just that, an idea. For now, Stadia is little more than a footnote. In multiple ways, this display was pretty accurate. Also, where's the dinosaur game at Google? Hello? This could be you, Stadia. This could be you. If you actually gave a single shit. This is your profits now with no dinosaur game. And that's your profits with dinosaur game. I think it's quite obvious what should be done here. Look at this old dinosaur game. Fucking boring. It's just boring dinosaur. Now look at this new dinosaur game. Big dinosaur. Little dinosaur. Fortnite dinosaur. The gang's all here. Hey bro, what's the one thing you want on Stadia? Dinosaur game? I agree. You had one job, Stadia, one job, and you ruined it. That's it. I'm going back to on live. Holy shit, a corpse. <laughs>